It's a good thing I did my Oldsmobile video today. Well, before this afternoon. Because now it's raining outside. And I heard we're supposed to get snow tomorrow. Oof. Anyway, so um, a lot of people are asking me to give uh, some advice on which arboreal tarantulas you should be starting off as your first one and then how you work your way up to the much more expert ones. So I'm going to draw something on the board and hopefully that will give you some insight. Okay, so choosing an arboreal tarantula is like climbing up a ladder. So the first bottom rung is suitable for your beginners and then once you work way up towards the middle you're, you're going to head towards your intermediate species and then finally on the top rung is your experience. You really don't want to start off with an experienced one as your first uh, arboreal or any tarantula for that matter because um, a lot of people can't fathom the speed and aggression from those types of spiders. Before I do that I want to address something that's a bit of a pet peeve of mine that I see a lot of my personal messages. Guys, poisonous does not equal venomous so whenever I see poisonous, I'm going to say you should be using venomous because it's a much more better terminology. I could say uh, G. rosea and P. regalis are poisonous, but I cannot say to what degree. This is where the venomous terms comes in. I could say P. pulker is much more venomous than G. rosea. I just want to address this so people can understand the, ter the meaning of the term poisonous and venomous. Venomous is the degree of venom that they have. Poisonous, they're all, po all tarantulas are poisonous, even the most docile and the most aggressive, they're all, have, they're all poisonous, but venomous determines the degree of venom that they have. Obviously the um, old worlds that come from Africa, Asia, uh, Australia and Europe are far more venomous than what you see in the Americas, like the North, Central and South America. Anywho, so let's go back to the topic of the video, choosing the arboreal tarantulas. So the only beginner I could really recommend you getting is the Avicularia genus. So Avicularias are probably the most, most docile arboreal you can get. In fact, that's possibly the only docile arboreal that you can find. They're very cheap on pet stores. Um, you can get uh, wild caught, uh, near size adults, uh, Avic Avix for about 20 to $25. I've seen them rarely in pet stores. You can also buy them on online dealers, but if you want to get your a specific one, you know, like, um, or the rare ones like Purpuria, uh, Metallica, Urticans, Versicolor, you might want to visit an online dealer and uh, maybe purchase one from there. Okay, so I put Avix in the beginners for a couple of reasons. For one, they're cheap. You can uh, easily get them in pet stores or online breeders. I see a lot of uh, wild caught uh, three plus inch specimens going for twenty to twenty five dollars in pet stores or you can get them on online dealers for uh, slings. Um, if you, but if you want specific avicularias, you know like if you want the uh, Miniatrix, Metallica, Purpuria, uh, Giroldi or Versicolor, you might want to ask an online dealer if, if they have those in stock because it's very rarely do I see um, pet stores get uh, Avix this rare. So that's one reason why I put them in, in the beginners because they're cheap. The second one they're docile but they can be a bit skittish but they're not, they're not fast enough as the intermediates or experience so this will give you an, an idea of how to keep a uh, arboreal and how fast they can be. Three, um, they're less venomous than the intermediate and the experienced, possibly because they have urticating hairs. The only times you'll get urti urticating hairs if they uh, come into contact with you if you're handling it. They'll just rub their hairs in defense, but I rarely see them do that. Um, the only typically aggression patterns I'll see from Avic Avix is the um, sudden boltness and uh, poop cannons. They'll actually squirt poop at you and with uh, good aim. So that's about it. So uh, if you want I could show you a little some examples of uh, AVIX so that way it can help you determine what an AVIC looks like. Here's a Navic AVIC. This is a mature male, MJ. You right here. Very, very handleable. And I'll show you uh, Lily, which is my uh, two and a half inch female.
There she is. You can see she's very docile, very slow. And I'll just give a good little handling bit if she lets me. Actually, she doesn't want. But as you can see, they're very slow, very predictable, and uh, they make great handling pets compared to your G. Rosea. So I'll show you some other ones. So I have a five and a half inch female of the clear versicolor named Tetra in here. Uh, apparently she's hiding, so we won't see her, but here's the cage. It's just an ordinary five gallon tank on its side with uh, some fake leaves and plants. And so sort of just use some vermiculite, that's all you need. So just be sure if you want to house an arboreal, just keep it tall and uh, and a lot of uh, bark so you can climb. So that's a Vicularia, Vicularia. I'll show you the urticans right now. And this is Cat. This is my Vicularia urticans. This is the giant Peru pink toe. She's close to five, six inches right now. She's the largest one that I have. And you can see she's uh, very calm and very docile. She's just huge. See, the only problem about Avix is that they don't like the touch of skin. So this is why sometimes they'll be spooked when you, do, when you try to handle them. But if you want to take it very slow, they'll be great. And yeah, she's a pooper. But yeah, she's very cool. Alright, now for the intermediates. Now for the intermediates, these are something that if you want to go a step up from a Vicularia, so you want it to be a bit more faster, a bit more aggressive, and slightly more venomous. So the intermediates that I recommend are the Samopoas, which is, includes the Camerjai, Pulker, uh, Erminia, and Reduncus. Reduncus is actually the a bit more rare to find, but I'll show you the ones that I have and I'll tell you more about them. Okay, so here's an example of a Salmopoas. This is my two-inch female Salmopoas Pulker, Pama Blonde. This is Rosalina. If I can get the flashlight. There we go. Here she is. This is a two-inch female. Uh, wouldn't exactly handle these tarantulas because uh, these are known to be pretty badly tempered. Not so much as P. Arminia. And Reduncus is probably about the same temperament as the Pulker. But you can see this is a two inch female and she hates being messed around with. As far as keeping conditions are concerned for Samopoas, they're very easy to take care of. I keep them just like any like pokies or any other teas. Um, I keep my room generally around 79 degrees Fahrenheit during nighttime and about uh, 82 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. With the help of the space heater, I just leave it on a couple of hours a day, not, not 24 hours. And that's about it. So keeps it warm and misting I just miss about once a week. I just pour warm water over the substrate and that's about it. But you really must important to have ventilation and ex it is extremely important for edicularias because they thrive on high heat, high humidity and high heat and well ventilated conditions. If you don't have any of those three it um, may not survive well. That's, uh, that's the problem that I have experienced with uh, my the Calaria fasciolata and a couple of my avix slings that uh, apparently die with no reason. That's why they usually refer them to sudden avic deaths. But anyways, that's uh, my polker, so I'll show you the other two Samopoas that I have. Bench female Samopoas Camerdry, Trinidad Chevron. Uh, same conditions I keep as my polker. So this is a critter keeper with a lot of uh, cork bark or far away from outside, so that way she can uh, climb. So apparently for these temperaments, uh, slightly calmer than Erminia and Pulker and Reduncus, I actually would recommend these, getting these as your first Salopoas. Erminia's I probably would 
rank them as experts because they are known to charge and um, they're much more aggressive than uh, most. But uh, very underrated in the hobby, these guys. Um, you got about having a seven to not six, seven inch leg span. Uh, freshly molted specimens are moss green with uh, like orange toes you can see right here. Yeah, and I used to handle a mature male back into the past. I used to have one, and uh, he was really calm. So I don't really endorse handling sound poses just because of their unpredictable nature. There's the molt from my Brachypelma Bomi Mexican far leg. She grew really big, but uh, she's full grown. All right, now time to see the Arminia. So here's uh, here's what she looks like when handled. Pretty big. And here's the Samopoas Hermenia. This is a 3 inch female named Josie. Uh, wouldn't exactly get them as your first Samopoa, so I would wait till you deal with Cambridge Eye first before you attempt to get this one. Partly because uh, these are pretty nasty tempered and they are known to charge at you. They're just like Hapopum Olivinum in their behaviors. Really aggressive and uh, I heard some of them can actually stridulate in defense. And because some opposes don't have urticating hair, unlike Avix, uh, these make it a bit more venomous than them and slightly more aggressive. But that's a shot for... Alright, time for now the experienced ones now. Now for the experienced ones. These are the ones if you want to go beyond the some opposes genus. So um, I'll label the ones, the genus that I'm keeping as right now. So if you want to start off with a... a good experience one first. Um, I would suggest pokies. The, yeah, pokies. You guys know what they are. They're Poclothera genus. And then if you want to step up from that, I would go for um, Hedescadra. You know, the Hedescadra maculata, the Togostarbus baboon. That's another one. Because of their slightly more venom. Um, then if you want, then the next one to step up from that would be the Tapidokinius, the Tapis, or the Eridopelma genus. I only put them at the top of Hedoscadra because these are the fastest in the world. The Gigas is the fastest one. Um, but mind you, they're not that venomous, so that's why I rank them a bit higher. And the experienced one, the top, top one in the list is Stromatopelma. You know, the calciatum, the feather leg baboon. So, I'll show you some good examples of pokies, hedoscadra, tapinikinius, and stromatopelma. For the pokies, well, as I said in my tarantula nighttime video 14, you know, the one with my Pocothera peterson eye drumming, uh, I suggested getting a P. regalis, Indian ornamental. Those, these are one of the most readily available and cheapest of them all. Then you could probably get yourself, you know, the fasciata, the other ones, like the Rufalata, Ornata, Formosa, Metallica, Miranda, Tigrina Waselli. There's just a lot of them. So that's one pokey, and then you have the Formosa, another one. And you have the rare elusive P. Metallica. And you have the Rufalata, Red Slate Ornamental. Pocothera Miranda. They generally have the same temperament. Um, these are very quick. To, uh, spiders, like lightning fast. Um, they're not so so bad in aggression, but uh, if you do corner them, they can react uh, pretty aggressively. Uh, some specimens like the Ornata and the Fasciata are slightly a bit more defensive than the other Pokies, but uh, in general they're not that bad to deal with. Now for the Hedoscadra, who's the only genus available in the hobby, is the Maculata. That's so my adult female is in there and I have here's the juvenile three inch female these are really quick spiders uh, they can be pretty nasty tempered very quick and uh, very accurate when they attack so if you see some handling videos on them I wouldn't suggest handling those they're pretty potent as well <clears throat> Then Tapinikinius is the only one that I have left. Uh, Tapinikinius gigas is a mature male. Uh, very, very, very fast. This is why I put them a bit hard in the maculata. Because of their speed. So, 
Uh, Mr. Leahy, which is my larger specimen, is with Tarantula Canada right now, it's seducing some females. Um, I'm very likely to get a sack from them, so I'll be able to uh, sell some to you, but only can sell them to cane, do uh, cane residents only, because I don't have the fish and wildlife permits. But I am keeping about 10 of them, and hopefully you can start a breeding project with them. And finally, Stramata Palma, my only calciatum. Uh, she saw her in a nighttime video, but she's actually hiding in there. There you can see some leg movement in there. So that's it. Hopefully I gave you some good advice on choosing your arboreal tarantula. And uh, good luck to you guys. Peace.